morning. It's Thursday. First Thursday of Ordinary Time. Today we are continuing in Mark, so if you want to cue it all up, we're in Mark 1, starting with verse 40. Jesus cleanses a leper. So let's begin with the Holy Spirit prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and they shall be created, and you will renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations through Christ our Lord. Amen. So good to see you all. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. We are settling in here. Uh, Mark 1, starting with verse 40. And a leper came to him, begging him, and kneeling, said to him, If you will, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I will be clean. And immediately the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. And he sternly charged him and sent him away at once and said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone. But go, show yourself to the priest, and offer your cleansing what Moses commanded for a proof to the people. But he went out and began to talk freely about it and spread the news so that Jesus could no longer openly enter a town, but was out in the country, and people came to him from every quarter. Okay, so first impression I hate to say this, but I think St. Mark needed an editor because that pronoun reference thing is making me crazy. Um, but other than that, uh, let's talk about what happened here. First of all, lepers and leprosy. Leprosy was a hideous disease. It was a disease that was apparent. Um, it was an ugly, like physically ugly disease. It was a painful disease with painful sores. Um, and at the time, it was, it was very contagious, there was no cure, and so lepers were ostracized, and they were shamed, and they were shunned, and they were sent to the outer regions so that they couldn't contaminate anyone. Um, and so it was a very lonely, very isolating, very um, desolate disease. And so we have this leper who has enough faith in Christ to believe that Christ can heal him. And he comes to him and he begs him to be healed, right? So Jesus doesn't do what most people of that time did to lepers. Most people of that time backed away, right? They didn't want anything to do with them. They didn't want to catch it. They didn't want to be associated with it. They backed away. Jesus doesn't withdraw in disgust. Instead, he draws near, right? He, he stretches out his hand, moves towards him, and touches him. He is willing. And then, here we go again, immediately, the leprosy left him. We have the word immediately again. It is immediate. The effect is immediate and dramatic. He is clear, clean, free of disease. And if you can imagine like a horrible skin disease all over somebody and then immediately his skin is clean and clear, right? So this happens. Jesus looks at him. He looks at the healed man and he tells him to go to the priest and to be accepted back into the communion of community, to leave isolation and go into communion, to do what is necessary to once again be a part of the community. He tells him to do that. And then he tells him not, other than the priest, not to make a big deal of this, not to tell a lot of people. Because Jesus knows that what will happen is he's going to have those flocks of people swarming to him again. And he's not gonna be able to function inside this community because people are coming to him as um, the latest, greatest doctor, right? And that's not what he's coming for. He's not coming as a political king. He's not coming as the latest, greatest doctor. 
he's coming as the Messiah and he doesn't want that to get distorted and he doesn't want to be inundated. So he says, please just tell the priest, do what you need to do to be accepted into the community, but refrain from telling the whole world. And this is where the leper just goes off in his own will, right? He just, he, his faith gets him to the point of healing, but he is so crazy confused here. Um, see that you say nothing to anyone, but go and show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded for a proof to the people immediately. But he went out and began to talk freely and to spread the news. He's going to spread the news. So he thinks that the greatest gift is his restored health. And he has missed that the greatest gift would actually be a friendship with Jesus. Um, it's the offer of companionship and communion with Christ himself. And he's going to reject that, right? Because we need to be able to trust our friends. We need to be able to have a give and take, have a reciprocity with our friends. He's going to reject that. Um, and, and he's going to actually cause for Jesus that which Jesus has just delivered him, right? Because think about it. Here's what's going to happen. He goes, he tells everybody. And now what happens? Jesus could no longer openly enter a town. So Jesus is now pushed to the margins. They've reversed roles. He's pushed out of the town because he can't openly enter the town. The town that was shunning the leper, now Jesus can't go there. And they've reversed roles. And that's, that's what Jesus does, right? He takes on our isolation and our desolation and he gives us the freedom to move forward. But what about the leper? He gets what he wants. He gets to be clean and clear. But he ends his relationship with Jesus. He totally ignores. No, no, he doesn't even ignore it. He defies it. He defies what Jesus had admonished him. Moments after being cured of this hideous disease, he defies Christ. He was open and faithful enough to be healed, to get something from Jesus. But then he denies Christ's ongoing relationship. And I think we need to pause for a minute and think about our lives. Think about fervent prayers we've prayed, times that we have been open and faithful enough to get what we want from God. And did that deepen our relationship with Christ? Or did we ignore him after that? It's worth pondering for a moment. And here's the other thing. We go to God with our requests. And we go to God wanting healing from all kinds of things, whether they're physical or emotional. We really do want restoration. We want to be healed and we want to be whole. And he is willing to offer that, but it comes with structure. It comes with, um, with admonitions. And he offers us a banquet of life with him, but it's not a cafeteria. You can't pick and choose. Oh, I'll take this good thing, but I won't obey that thing. That's not how it works. It's the whole thing. He's offering the full banquet. You can't pick and choose. Because when you do that, you're shutting him out of the places where you're not accepting the fullness. So we have to be all in. We have to be obedient. We have to be grateful. We have to listen to and obey the admonitions instead of defying them. Or we push Jesus into the isolation and desolation, and we are not in communion with him. That's a lot 
to get from this passage, but this passage has always fascinated me. Like, how could you do that? How could you be healed and then just go and defy him? But when you think about all the little ways that Jesus heals us and how many times we break his heart and push him to the corners and to the margins, we do it. So prop your Bible open to Mark 1, 40. Read that passage again and think about the places where Jesus has healed you. Give thanks and then listen carefully to the admonitions because they're there. I don't think I'll see you tomorrow. I think Michaela's gonna be here tomorrow, but I'm not quite sure. So I'll work that out with her and um, have a beautiful Thursday. Oh, take up and read members. I will be with you at 9.30. Um, for our regular Bible study of Acts, we'll go from 9.30 to 10.30. And then at 10.40, we're going to do an accountability group for the Clean Hearting group. So I'm going to brew another pot of tea and keep going this morning. We'll see you later. Bye.